Hamza, what's your name? Mr. Khan, what's your whoever? He says, can I have a few minutes with you? Ah, the Muslim is so ever hospitable as a come, come. Welcome, sit down. Order some tea and some samosas. His proverbial hospitality. Even if the guy has come to take his life, he orders some tea and samosas, says, come, sit down. <laughs> so now the Christian starts. It's a new technique now. He said, do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe in Jesus? You, you, you. You don't? You are not a Muslim. That brother of there, I was he says, no. <laughs> you better reconvert him. <laughs> you can't be a Muslim, wallah. You say you don't believe in Jesus, you're not a Muslim. Maybe you didn't know the implication, you didn't understand, you didn't grasp it. The Muslim must say, yes, we believe in Jesus. He says, you know, he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. What do you say? What do you say? Yes. yes. We must be honest. Look, you must ever be honest. Hazrat Isa says something very beautiful. He said, seek ye the truth, and the truth shall make you free. At any time, anybody, whatever question the man poses to you, give the straight, true answer. Don't be afraid to get caught. Even if he's taking to your slaughter, to the hangman's noose, cooperate with him. Wallah, this is what man must do. Truth! Whatever you recognize as truth, you accept, you accept, you accept. Where he's taking you, that's not your business. You have to speak the truth. You believe that he's, he, is, he was born miraculously? He said yes. That's what the Quran testifies. He was born without any male intervention. Jesus Christ. We accept. You know he was the Messiah, Masih, translated Christ. So we accept. We accept. He says, you know, he gave life to the dead. What do you say? Yes. So be Allah with the permission of Allah. So whatever he says, the Muslim cooperates. He has got to cooperate because this is his faith. So now he's posing you, changing the manner of his questioning. He said, you accept that Jesus was born miraculously, without any male intervention. He says, I believe. I believe. He said, was Muhammad so born? You're Muhammad. Was he born like that, without a father? No. He had a father and a mother. He said, yes. So, one degree higher up for Jesus. See, your prophet had a father and a mother, Jesus had only a mother. One degree higher. He doesn't tell you that, but he's proved it. He says, you know, Jesus was Masihullah, Allah's Messiah. Translated Christ. You accept that? Yes. Allah tells you in the Holy Quran, Masihu Isa ibn Maryama. Messiah, Masih, Jesus, Christ, the son of Mary. We accept. Was Muhammad Masihullah? Right. See, a brother said he was Rasulullah. See, yes. He's not Masihullah in the Quran. He is Rasulullah. Yes. But Isa is Rasul and Masih. Do you know that? Yes. So he's got two degrees. Hmm, it's two degrees higher. Your prophet is only Rasul. His is Rasul and Masih. Two degrees. Another degree of Jesus. He says, you know, Jesus gave life to the dead. Did your prophet give life to the dead? No. no. Another degree of Jesus. See what's happening. Say, so where is your prophet Muhammad? Where is he now? Yes, where is he? Buried in Medina. Yes. Where is Jesus? He's in heaven. He's coming back. Say, so, yes. Your prophet is dead and buried in Medina. Jesus is here in heaven and is coming back. Now don't you think God had a purpose in doing all that? You think he did for nothing? You do things for nothing? You just made kurbani? You know Bakri we had? Idul Adha? You made a sacrifice? Sheep or goat or cow? I don't know what you do here. But you make kurbani? And when you do kurbani according to the teachings of Islam, you look for an animal without blemish? 
Horn not broken, ear not cut, not blind, not limping, right? Yes. So if God Almighty wants to make a sacrifice for his creation, is he going to look for second best? You look for second best? No. Then will Allah look for second best? No. And he's proved to you who is second best. Who? Your prophet. Come and argue with him. Debate with him. These are new, new methods. You know, wallah, it is so easy and so childish, the whole thing. But, because you're not in the field. You are not in the field. You don't know what are the implications of what the guy is talking about. So, you are being led to the slaughter, and he's going to slaughter you. He's slaughtering other people. See, the ordinary people, the simple people, they cooperate. And they get slaughtered because they don't know what are the implications of all this. They say Jesus was born miraculously. So what? So what? Does that make him superior to Muhammad? He says yes. But I says, look man, according to this standard of yours, if that makes Jesus God and the Son of God because he's got no earthly father, then Adam is a greater God. The Quran tells us very simple reasoning, logic. The similitude or the example of Jesus in the sight of Allah is like that of Adam. He made him from dust. And he said, be and he was. So if Jesus is God, or the son of God because he's got no father then Adam is a greater God and a greater son of God because he's got no father and no mother will you stand by that? no the guy won't accept that I said what's wrong with you? if Jesus makes him great because he's got no mother then Adam has got no mother and no father who is superior? Adam worship him why don't you worship Adam? Oh, but you see, he was created from dust, says the Christian. He said, what about Melchizedek? In the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, you read there, in the Christian Bible, it's Melchizedek, the high priest of Salah, without father, without mother, without beginning, without end. I'm only reading what Paul wrote, without father, without mother. Without beginning, without end. Melchizedek, the high priest of Salem. I'm asking who's greater, Jesus or Melchizedek? See, Jesus had a, father, a mother. This man got no father and no mother. Who's superior? Jesus had a beginning in the stable. Every Christian testifies to that. Every Christmas they remind themselves, born in the stable to a Jewish girl. Right? He had a beginning and he had an apparent end. They say he died on the cross. He had a beginning, he had an apparent end. This man, no beginning, no end. Who is greater? Melchizedek God Jesus. Come on, and stand to reason. No, the guy nice. He, he wants to get out. He's got other appointments, he must run. No, the thing is, you have to do a little bit of homework. The problem with us is that we are too damn lazy. You do nothing. See, your tasbih won't help you. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, that won't help you here. This is a different thing. You do your fall, Allah will reward you. He won't question you on the day of judgment, why didn't you make salah? Because you did. That won't save you from this. This is a different thing altogether. You have to do a little bit of homework. And Brother Hamza is, is carrying on classes here. I don't know how much he's charging, I didn't have a chance to ask him, Allah. What do you charge, brother? Brother Hamza Malik tells